So um, we're going to make a little test cob and we've made some test bricks so we're going to go with the ratios that work best for our test bricks which was about two clay to one sand. So we're going to do two five gallon buckets of clay, uh, one five gallon bucket of sand and then we'll add straw to taste, see how it turns out. that you stick to your ratios and it's important if you're having a workshop to keep an eye on what everybody's doing because some people might might say oh five gallon up to here is what I'm doing and their halves might be lower so you might not get too full clay so just got to keep an eye on that and again it's you know it's never perfect but all right we have tarp Volcano, little room in the middle. Sand. That's awesome. <laughs> How awesome is that? It's like squashing grapes. So Really all we're trying to do right now is make the sand go away. So we're going to mix it in enough that the clay will kind of cover up the sand. We won't know it's there. Once you get good mix with not a lot of rocks you can really move pretty quickly. You do this with a couple people if you have a real big mix. You roll it and what happens is that in the beginning it's going to stick to your tarp. Once you do this enough and you get the right consistency, it'll just peel right off and your tarp will be clean. And then you, you get into that point, you know you're getting a good mix. Say the straw part again. Once you get this part mixed, we're going to add the straw or any other kind of binder manure works well. The straw obviously ties in together and gives you the tensile strength and the manure helps strengthen your cob as well. It is by just kind of doing a ball in your hand. That's good. And it sticks to the bottom of your hand. Now we'll do a drop test after the straw. We want to take a look at how that flattens out. Okay. So what we do now seems nice, is we take straw and typically you want to use the longest straw possible, which usually you don't have to be selective if you're in Northern California and you're working with wheat straw, but this stuff has got a lot of shake in it, and very tough to find the long straw, there's not much we can do, so we just come in we do a layer, we just work that in again until it sort of goes away. Okay, that's good right now, and then we'll flip it. You get longer on the inside of that. Yeah, there's some good long ones in there. So we get it embedded. A layer of straw embedded into the clay. Mm -hmm. 
and um, we'll slowly test this. Your loaf should be able to hold your weight more or less when you jump on it. So right now, we need more straw because we know that... You want to squash it first or then it doesn't matter? No, I like putting a little bit on the top here. This way it, it digs right in. want it dry but I'm feeling that it's going to be malleable it's going to be workable in my hands so you kind of just play with the straw and keep keep adding let's see This is really sticky. Woo! Good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll just do a little test. Remember how the other one just, yeah. boom. So, we're getting there. We have a lot of open straw still that we want to work in. And because this isn't the longest straw, I might, if I were using longer straw, feel like oh, we might be done. But I think we can add a little bit more. Now you also want to think about how wet your layers are, your cob, because when you start cobbing and building your wall, if it's really wet, it's going to start slumping out, right? Mm -hmm. So. We'll make our first layer a little bit, a little bit heavier, thicker, so that it doesn't. It's called splooging. It doesn't splooge out to the sides. Balls. <laughs> we'll put them down. So you make your mix, and you don't have to form them perfectly. You could just take a chunk like this and just put it down. And then we're going to form a line. So Karen, mm -hmm. I want you to be here tossing the first. Piece to uh, Sarah. Okay. And we've had our pits and our clay so far from the from the building site, and it obviously just depends on your situation. But we've had a cob line of 15 people. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and again, it just depends on how big you make these. So I'm going to go over by the by the wall. And Sarah, you'll get in between. And what I'm going to do with the first one, I'm just going to shove it straight down into the, the layer below. I'm not going to worry about doing anything right now. But the idea is to move as quickly as possible. And then you. Oh. This is big. Communication is key. <laughs> Ew, it's sticky. Once I get a layer like this, we are at the base, but I'm going to just use my thumbs to push into the cob and just work anything out. But this is really dense. We create these little holes in the top and then we, the next layer we're going to key right into these. So the idea is just to create one monolithic structure. One of two things happens. People either build in like a pyramid mm -hmm. or they build out like an upside down pyramid. Mm -hmm. So the way to keep that straight is to push down on the edge here, put it down here. And with this hand, you're kind of keying it in. 
And then this hand, well, we don't have a lot of space, but this hand actually pushes down huh. and slides and gives me my form. And I can just stand here and eyeball a nice straight plumb wall. Obviously, we're eyeballing, so it's not going to be perfect. And that's the idea. It's not your building. What you want to do is always build level. So you do a level, you do a course, then you do another course. You don't build a wall here and then key it in over here. So if this goes up to here, these two should go up to here. So you always want to see how much cob do I have left. So at the end of the day, you're not stuck with this funny mound. Right. You want to leave your cob flat so that the next day when you come in and, and add to that course, you're not building on an angle, okay? So I'll add a couple more. And never slap the clay, the cob. What you do when this, when you do this, you actually suck the moisture out to the outside. I don't know if you've ever worked with uh, clay in a studio mm -hmm. and you tap mm -hmm. it and it pushes it out. So we don't want to do that. We want to push on it. And there's little tricks to working with it if it does start to slump. Thank you. All right. I'm just going to leave this holes in it so that if we want to come in and add a little bit more to the foundation here we can it'll tie in a lot easier it just looks like it might be close to the top oh. 